Good afternoon, I'm, uh, and welcome to City Conversations. I'm Michael Alexander, the uh, director of uh, SFU City Conversations. We're presented by SFU Public Square, and we want to thank our sponsors, SFU Vancouver, Bing Tom Architects, and the SFU City Program. Today's special conversation is presented with the generous assistance of the Vancouver City Planning Commission. I want to acknowledge the uh, members of the Planning Commission, if you, uh, with folks uh, who have really helped with this uh, uh, with this event. This is for those of you who haven't been here. Why am I? First of all, why am I not surprised that this room is full today? Uh, but for those of you who haven't been here before, this is just, you know, these rooms are impossibly formal. They're going to be renovated uh, next year and hopefully in a much less formal uh, manner. But um, uh, they're set up for lectures. We don't do lectures. We have conversations here. Uh, so we don't have speakers and we don't have an audience. We have presenters and we have participants. And you are the participants. Um, the presenters are just going to briefly frame the conversation. Seven minutes, no more for each, uh, for each one. Then it's going to be your turn to ask questions, to uh, give opinions, to make observations. Uh, we've got a big room today, full room. Uh, so. Uh, please, when you uh, when you all call on people as you raise your hands, uh, keep it short uh, uh, so that we can get as many of uh, questions and uh, comments in as possible. But the point is, we want to encourage conversation. Anybody who brought your lunch, thank you so much. It is not rude to eat your lunch at City Conversations. We know that you have busy lives and uh, multitasking is encouraged here. If you're tweeting, it's at CityCon. Um, and today's topic, does Vancouver need a citywide plan? The basic layout of Vancouver streets, neighborhoods, schools, parks, and infrastructure dates from 1929. That plan was the foundation for many local area and community plans, transportation plans, and zoning maps identifying what could be built and where it could be built. After more than half a century of growth and change and with extensive public process in 1995, council adopted City Plan 95, a 20-year framework for subsequent community and other planning programs. Does that need an update? What would be the benefits of a new citywide plan that defines where growth would take place and what kind of growth should take place? What might that pro process look like and what hazards would it face? Today we are deeply honored to have with us Ann McAfee, who's <laughs> behind the computer, sorry who was Vancouver's co-director of planning and who guided the 1995 city plan along with uh, her co-director of, of planning, Larry Beasley, who's in, uh, in the, uh, uh, has joined us today and we're very pleased to see Larry. Uh, Patrick Condon is uh, the chair of, of urban design at UBC School of Architecture and Landscape Architecture. And Peter Whitelaw is a principal at the planning group MODIS and is very experienced in creating and updating plans for other BC communities so that we can learn from them as well. So we'll start. Um, Anne, I think you said that uh, we're going to start first. 